Hey, it's Casey Orr and Sean Whitfield with iTruckTV.com. It's time for your NASCAR update, and we're going to get you up to speed. We're covering the FedEx 400 Benefiting Autism Speaks from Dover. And, Sean, there are really two stories on this weekend. Number one, Tony Stewart's improbable victory after what's been pretty much a miserable year so far. And second, Jimmy Johnson absolutely blowing his chance to win his record eighth victory at Dover. Yeah, that's to say the least. It was certainly Jimmy Johnson's race to lose, and he uh, led many laps in the race. Get on lap 20, and that's when his bad luck goes down. He uh, did not have a good restart against Juan Pablo Montoya, and NASCAR black flagged him and sent him down pit road. Well, you know, Juan Pablo Montoya had the horrible restart, but he was the leader, so Jimmy Johnson's normal restart became a great one, and you're not allowed to do that. He didn't give up position. Um, It was NASCAR's call. Everybody seems to agree with NASCAR. I kind of think Jimmy was stuck there. Juan Pablo spins the tires. Jimmy can't just slam on the brakes, you know, mid-race, so... Bad luck for Jimmy Johnson. No one's feeling sorry for him. He's Jimmy Johnson, but certainly his misfortune is what opened the door for one of the most surprising Tony Stewart victories we've seen in a long time. That's right. And, of course, in the FedEx 400, uh, it was Tony Stewart's 48th victory of his career. However, it was his first and only victory so far in 2013. After a miserable year when he's only had one top 10 at a, a racetrack he is admittedly not good at. Sean, coming into this race, he said he expected 400 miles to feel like 800 because he knew his car wasn't going to be good. But, you you know, you got to hand it to Steve Addington, his crew chief, makes a great call late in the race, and there he is in second place with 20 laps to go and starts hunting down Juan Pablo Montoya, then gets to him and has the ability and the car to get around Juan for a win with only three laps to go. Tony Stewart has been just had a miserable year so far and to come out and win at a track that he's never really been that good at I think this is big for the 14 team well it is in case you know you and I have been talking uh, for the first 13 races or the first 12 races of the season so far that Tony Stewart is just not a contender in 2013 and the chances of him even having a shot at the chase were pretty uh, pretty low at best and you know that this has been a very down year for the entire team for the entire organization of Stuart Haas Racing and I would suspect that that win can do wonders for the motivation and attitude of the entire race team. The joke has always been when the weather heats up so does Tony Stewart and if he's ever needed to heat up this is the summer he needs to do it and what better it's June Tony goes out and gets a victory. Is this just a great race call that is going to turn into a victory or is this the start of something and I think that's what we'll see going forward. Let's move right into the results of the uh, FedEx 400 at Dover International Speedway. And, of course, Tony Stewart got his first victory of 2013. He started 22nd and ended up in Sunoco Victory Lane. Second spot was Juan Pablo Montoya. A big surprise to many NASCAR fans of his run yesterday and and had a chance to be in victory lane there at uh, the end of the race. In third spot was Jeff Gordon. Fourth, Kyle Busch. Fifth was Brad Keselowski. Brad has experienced some problems in post-race inspection, and we suspect a penalty will be coming from NASCAR in the very near future. In sixth spot, Clint Boyer. Seventh, Joy Logano. Eighth, Kevin Harvick. Ninth, Mark Martin. And tenth, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Uh, Sean, we talked talked about Jimmy Johnson led 143 laps ended up finishing 17th with uh, his disappointing late race mistake now what does that mean for the standings well Sean it still means Jimmy's on top that's right Jimmy Johnson is still leading our NASCAR Sprint Cup Series standings however the uh, points have gotten a little closer from what they were last week Carl Edwards is in second there's 30 points separating first and second place in the standings third is Clint Boyer fourth Matt Kenseth fifth Kevin Harvey Six is Dell Earnhardt Jr. Seventh, Casey Kane. Eighth, Brad Keselowski. Ninth, Kyle Busch. And tenth, Paul Menard. In the 11th spot, Jeff Gordon. And 12th spot, Eric Amarola. However, if the chase were to start today... Tony Stewart, who is now in 16th place but has that victory, would actually come in in 12th, and Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart would be your two wild card finishers. The only other driver outside the top 20 in points with a victory is David Reagan. He is in 27th. So how big can one victory be? This time a week ago, we're talking about Tony Stewart 
in 20th in points, barely hanging on. Now all of a sudden, he's up to 16th, and if the chase were to start today, he'd be in it. That is a big, big win for a team that desperately needed it. Oh, absolutely. We were giving him no chance at all, and now he has a possibility to be a wild card contender as we approach the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Of course, we're headed this weekend to the Poconos, to the race at Pocono Raceway, so we'll have all of that to come coming up next week on iTruck TV. Of course, you can also find us at Valvoline Racing Radio on Rock 105 in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and hear us each and every Monday and Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern on iHeartRadio. Here on the NASCAR Update at iTruck TV, where Sean and I keep you up to speed.